score. Here's Rod Black and Dwayne Ford. And that's Chad Lucas. Second straight reception, third so far. And Cody Pickett in with his second possession with the Argos here tonight has his team moving close to the BC goal line. Well, this is exactly what Coach Bart Andrus saw in receiver Chad Lucas that caused him to bring him in. The two of them, of course, were together. We welcome all the viewers across Canada. Cody Pickett gets the start tonight. For oh. Kerry Joseph, ineffective last week. Pickett started two games last year. So far, he's been good here. Pickett with time. Deep in the end zone and way deep into the end zone. So it'll be second down now. Here are our starting quarterbacks tonight, brought to you by Wendy's Baconator, the official hamburger of the CFL. It's way delicious. It's Wendy's. Buck Pierce on the left, Cody Pickett on the right. Here's coming off. Fine performance last week in a win against Saskatchewan. Cody Pickett, 7 of 11 last week in that drubbing that the Argos took. The shutout loss to the Montreal Alouettes. Second down, Pickett. Corner out again, Lucas and overthrew him. So that will bring out Justin Medlock to put three on the board for the Argos. Well, and they both had the right idea. The throw was just a little bit off the mark. They wanted to set the, the corner. Dante Marsh up as if they were going to push a little bit deeper down the field. Pick it through behind, but a little bit too far behind. Nonetheless, the Argos convert that good field position on that possession into a great opportunity to open the scoring here tonight. Medlock near perfect this season, but for an upright against Winnipeg. This just a little chip shot from the 15-yard line. And the Argos drive, and they score first here tonight. Wendy's Friday Night Football on TSN will continue. Downtown Toronto, Buck Pierce will get his second goal from scrimmage here tonight. In just a moment, Argos lead 3-0. A battle of two, two and four teams. Sputtering starts to the season. And slipping at first base was Martel Mallet. You can see the configuration, obviously, down uh, set up for the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll talk more about the field conditions a little bit later as we bring out Buck Pierce and the BC Lions. Buck Pierce flanked in that backfield by Martel Mallet, who has been arguably the CFL's best rookie thus far. Receiving core that has Paris Jackson coming off a strong eight catch 92 yard performance a week ago The O-line rounding into form Darren Hirspink makes his fifth consecutive start since taking over at left tackle Wrapped up and brought down in that dirt again Starting lineups brought to you by Nissan fan and proud sponsor of the CFL there you see the strength of this Argo team. Off to a great start again tonight. The defensive line, Adriano Belli leads that group with four sacks. Middle linebacker Zeke Moreno coming off a fine 10 tackle performance that was sort of lost in the shuffle in Montreal. And on the back end, Jason Shivers, the weak side halfback spot, will often be matched up tonight against number 81, G. Roy Simon. Pierce over the middle, wide open is G. Roy Simon. Wrapped up and brought down by free safety, Will Poole. Well, no doubt there will be a bit of an emphasis in this BC offense on trying to get G. Roy Simon a little bit more involved. They're, of course, happy to collect a victory last week. But G. Roy's numbers are down a little bit. Here you see that open field elusiveness. After the catch, spin to the outside, loses Willie Middlebrooks. Pick up an extra yak yard or two. The streak continues. G. Roy Simon, 113 games and counting. With a catch out of the backfield. Mallet running room. And then knocked out of bounds. Kevin Iben. And this is something that's been a bit of a bonus for the BC offense in the early going. 
is Martel Mallett's ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. He's their second leading receiver in terms of receptions thus far this year, and we saw this a little bit last year once Stefan Logan took over at that tailback spot. The ability to show the, throw those short dump passes, get that back out in the open field and let him roll. Second and four, Pierce to the air again, over the top. With a huge interception early in this ball game. The Argos are able to execute a twist perfectly here. They get two going this way, one coming around. The man coming around to the left is late. And that's what Jason Jimenez is waiting for, is someone to come back to him when he sees guys going to his right. He ends up losing his man, Claude Harriet in the shuffle. Harriet's biggest damage may have been after causing that hurry. The block he delivers crushing the Lions quarterback, Buck Pierce. So Cody Pickett. Little out pattern and a ball that should have been caught by Chad Lucas. Maybe a little low, but Lucas has made three catches so far here tonight. And a good start for Cody Pickett to set up shop again. No running plays so far tonight. They have the weapon of Jamal Robertson and Jared Payton, for that matter, in the backfield. But it's been all aerial attacks so far for Toronto. Well, consider this part of the chess match. I think anybody coming into this game would have anticipated that with Cody Pickett making his first start of 2009, third of his career, that there would be a feeling that they'd lean on Jamal Robertson in the running game a little bit. The Argos try to catch BC off balance and come out slinging. There's Kerry Joseph, who is a backup again last year. Weeks 12 and 13, Cody Pickett did start. And Cody Pickett is not an unknown to everyone else, but to some BC Lions, they don't know much about Cody Pickett. Here's DB Corey Banks on the Argo QB. We're going to try to put him in the box and make him make reads like he was a starter instead of changing the whole game plan for him. I mean, it, it, it can either be this disaster for him or it can be great for him. I mean, you know, a young guy don't know much about, you let him get some rhythm, and he may become the next whoever. But as far as I'm concerned, I want to make him be the next bus. Well, we'll see what happens here tonight. Second and ten. Pick it. And underthrow this time. And again, the heat was coming. This is an Argo team. One of the reasons that Kerry Joseph is a backup, so ineffective last week, that surrendered seven sacks last week against Montreal. Yeah, they were absolutely overmatched, but I'll tell you, I'm going to defend this offensive line a little bit. These guys as a group clearly haven't played well, but the fact is, it is tough to play offensive line when your team's not committed to the run game and when you're playing from behind. and you're having to throw the football all the time. You saw one of those offensive linemen, one who's been publicly criticized a little bit, probably because he naturally attracts some attention. Number 56, Rob Murphy, the former BC Lion. Justin Medlock from the 46. Look at this leg. Man, this guy can kick. Close captioning of the CFL on TSN is brought to you by Sport Check. Sport Check, the power of sport. 6 0 Toronto, and Buck Pierce feeling the effects of that shot from Claude Harriet. And the ice, the back of his neck, he looked a little woozy when he came off the field. Claude Fig is with us tonight. We'll get a report from the sideline. Jarius Jackson is warming up for the BC Lions. Ryan Grice Mullen trying to find a seam on the sideline. And finally knocked out of bounds by James Green. Ryan Grice Mullen is starting to pick up some of the slack left from Ian Smart, who's due to come back next week for the BC Lions. And Jarius Jackson will take over for Buck Pierce. Well, this is shades of week two. The BC Lions taking on the Edmonton Eskimos, and Buck Pierce left the game after having his bell rung. Jarius Jackson came out gunning and 
left the stadium as the league's offensive player of the week. We'll see if he can recreate a little bit of that magic here tonight. He has great chemistry with Paris Jackson. And on the sideline, Emmanuel Arsenal. Three or four yards shy of a first down. Jarius Jackson, Harris Jackson, G. Roy Simon. Seems they like to go vertical a little bit more with a strong arm, number seven behind the center. Well, you take advantage of the attributes of the guy you've got in the game. And that's one of the strengths Jarius Jackson brings to the table is that cannon of an arm, the ability to throw that ball downfield. Second and six, Jackson over the top and overthrown and knocked down by Zeke Moreno. So both BC quarterbacks have been bruised here so far tonight. Good pressure.